Hey guys, good to see everybody again. If you're new here, my name's Steve and welcome to AEAC Vlog. First timers, this is not my main YouTube channel. This is an offshoot of the Airgun Exploration and Advancement channel, also called AEAC Home. It is over there that you will ultimately catch a full review of the new FX Maverick. What that means to you is 50 yards testing, 100 yards testing, trigger, refill, sound, and a whole bunch more. This is not that. This is Airgun School for the Hungry. Today, I'm going to quickly get you around the gun, and then I'm going to actually show you how to tune its dual regulators and external hammer spring. Then I'm going to show you how to swap out the barrels and bottle. And then I'm going to walk you through 12 custom tunes that'll be important to your ownership experience. And then we'll close it out with some show and tell. But before we get started, a lot of you have had questions for me about the recent LASIK eye surgery that I got. So when you go for LASIK, what they do is they basically take a cold laser and they reshape or they perfect the lenses of both of your eyeballs. Now they can perfect those towards a bias for distance, towards a bias for up close, and they can even take one eyeball and bias it for up close and one for distance. I elected to have both my eyes perfected for distance. It worked out really well for me. I wound up with 2015 vision in both eyes. However, there's a caveat. If you're 46 years old like I am, what happens is the muscles that actually bend on that lens of your eye so that you can see up close, they weaken as you age. And also that lens becomes less pliable than it was when you're 18 years old. So you can no longer look at your phone or anything up close with great clarity, even if you get LASIK for distance. And that's the category I fall into. So I found myself occasionally using a pair of readers. These are 1.25 magnification. And for me, it sharpens anything inside of about, say, six feet. From six feet on, I've got perfect vision in both eyes now. So a lot of you have been hitting me up in comments on this channel, the other channel, Facebook, Instagram. And so there's kind of what's going on with that. All right, so here's my new readers from Warby Parker. My wife got them for me. So what you're looking at here is my number one review request for this year, the new FX, FX Maverick. It came to me by way of Southern Precision Air Weapons here in Yulee, Florida. Now, SPA is owned by Ken Hicks. If you don't know Ken, Ken has been, Ken's had a lot of success um, competing with air guns nationally and internationally. I've been filming him for probably the last four or five years at the Pyramid Air Cup, at the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge, at the Extreme Bench Rest, and he always seems to be in the money on the podium in several different disciplines, 25 yard, 100 yard, big bore, and the guy's also a master tuner. So, you know, it's kind of a privilege to have him sponsor my vlog and the full review that you're gonna catch over on the on AEAC Home. Um, this is also a guy where if you get to know him and his customers, follow him on the forums, he's got a very loyal following because he kind of provides this super hands-on service for all of his customers. He's very accessible. He's very knowledgeable. It's not the typical big box store retail experience. When you buy from Ken, for example, and most everything you see here can be had from him, um, there's a lot of like uh, white glove service and otherwise he'll put a complimentary tune on the gun to whatever your preference is. He tests them for accuracy, he tests them for velocity. If you do want a slug tune, he does have an upcharge for that because uh, slugs are very expensive and it takes a lot of these to uh, a lot of lead to actually tune these guns. These 12 shot charts that you see here, plus um, some flubbed ones over here and some OEM shot. I, I put like 5,000 rounds through this gun. So it's been an absolute beast for me. And um, and I, I just, honestly, guys, I can't say enough good things about it. What I think has you guys so excited is that this is basically a $1,450 to $1,800 gun, depending on how you package it. It comes in a little compact version. It comes in a value priced VP version. It comes in what you see here, minus some of these accessories over here, 
called uh, the Sniper. And you're basically 1450, 1650, and 1800 for those three guns. And um, being that in that price point window, it's offering you um, dual amp regulators that are externally adjustable, um, an external hammer spring adjuster um, with both macro and micro adjustments, bottles anywhere between. 300 cc's, 400 cc's, 480 cc's, or 580 cc's, and barrels, whoops, and barrels, I want to make sure that doesn't roll off the countertop, and barrels anywhere between, I think they're 300, uh, 600, and 700. No, excuse me, barrels are 500, 600, and 700 across those three guns. So you've got a lot of flexibility. And you can buy one gun and easily make it into the others. And I'm going to show you how to do that today as well. So if you guys have been with me for a while, you will have probably caught on that these tuning guides are getting super popular with not only you guys, but with the manufacturers as well. So I've been feeling the pressure to kind of up my game with all that because I want these to be resources for you guys that you can always refer back to and not just school. So if you look back historically over the last, let's call it two years, I've been able to provide tuning guides for you. Let me see, first it was the FX Impact, then it was the FX Crown Continuum, and then I believe it was the Air Venturi Avenger, and then it was the Daystate Red Wolf, which is an all electronic tuning guide, and then it was the, uh, the FX Dreamline Sabre Tactical Tuning Guide. And what's so cool about these guides, guys, is I would encourage you um, as I went through or provided each guide, my learning evolved. So they got better and better as far as the information that I could pass along or the knowledge that I could bestow upon, um, upon you guys. So, and they're also kind of, uh, you can cross reference them. The rules and guidelines that apply to one gun are really going to be the exact same for the other one. So I would encourage you to be sure to check out like the Air Venturi Avenger tuning guide the um, the FX Crown Continuum tuning guide, those are both very much more evolved than the original FX Impact tuning guide, as was the Dreamline and so on and, and so forth. So being that that's become kind of a fixture resource, uh, I've wanted to up my game with this. So what I've done and what I'm going to take you through today is I've come up with two programs, if you will. One is an FX... Um, FX Maverick AEAC tuning guide, things to know, kind of a before you get started kind of overview, just concepts and ideas that you want in your mind before you begin tuning that'll apply to this gun and a lot of others. And then I've also come up with an FX Maverick AEAC dual regulator adjustment sequence where I literally take you through step by step. I've got 15, 17, no, 18 different, or 16, 17, 18 different steps in here that will take you right through the entire process, leaving nothing out so that you guys won't miss anything. Now, while that seems like a lot and you're probably going, holy crap, how am I going to do that? It's actually really, really easy and it's actually a lot quicker than you might think, especially kind of once you get going with it. I did all of this here in about 10 days time. So, um, you know, this is something that I don't want you to be intimidated by. I initially was very intimidated by this because I looked at the couple of videos that were out there and I would watch the video A to Z on how to tune this gun and there was always like something missing to where I'm going, wait a minute, how did they get from there to there? Or how did they get from there to there? Or why did they go from there to there? This answers all of that. Now this has been archived and I've put this up for you over at the Airgun Nation forum under the PCP section, subsection, I think it's called PCP tuning. It happens to be stickied right now. I would encourage all of you guys, if you're gonna own this gun, um, you know, save that bookmark on your phone, on your desktop, so that you've always got it to refer back to as a step-by-step -step sequence. And I'm actually gonna take you through this today and demo it on the gun before I kind of walk you through these tunes why I chose them and why they'll be important to your ownership experience, okay? So the way I think we're going to do this, guys, is I first want to go go through kind of the guidelines so that you have a, an overview in your mind of what you're getting into with tuning this gun. 
All right, then I'll walk you through the steps and show you how to do it. And then we might kind of circle back and finish up with this again and see how it applies to, uh, to what we learned, all right? So, okay, things to know. And I've been kind of talking quick because I wanted to get through that intro. Oh, you know what? I haven't walked you around the gun and I promised you I'd do that. Um, all right. This gun has a lot of people super excited. And let me kind of share with you what's got them super excited. All right. Um, let's start with the barrels. So when you buy the compact, I think you're a 500 millimeter barrel. When you buy the VP, I think you're a 600. When you buy the sniper, which is this one, you're a 700, okay? Barrel length is not always your friend in the moment. And I found that out over the years across all brands and all different types of air guns, all right? The nice thing about barrel length is your air gun's guts have to work less hard to give you the same velocity. In other words, the longer you go with the barrel, the more efficient the gun becomes. It uses less air than a shorter barrel to push that pellet or slug to the same velocity. That also settles down the gun somewhat. Harmonics, recoil, flip is super important in an air gun because the, um, the shot cycle is nothing like it is in a powder burner. You know, you pull the trigger and then it's like all this stuff's going on and then the pellet goes down range. So there's lots of potential for you to screw things up with your shot between the time you pull the trigger and it actually leaves, okay? When you go to a shorter barrel, like say for example that 500 um, in the sniper, all right? And I'm going to show you how to actually, or excuse me, in the compact, I'm going to show you how to swap these out later. You know, that's a big difference. But what happens is now your gun needs to use more air to get to the same power velocity numbers with a given pellet or slug, okay? But also because the barrel is shorter, there's less dwell time in there. So I've always found it easier for me to be more accurate at 50 and 100 yards with a shorter barrel than with a longer barrel, okay? And so you've got long, short, and the in-between with the FX Maverick system. And um, not only can you, like I said, you can buy whatever platform you want and then turn it into the other one. So I think that's got a lot of people excited. What also has got a lot of people excited is FX offers different twist rates. Um, so the factory, they call these liners, I call it a barrel. The factory liner is a one in 24 twist, which is ideal for um, basically any projectile less than 34 grains. That's because that twist rate is designed to move a lighter weight pellet. It's designed to be optimized and let's just say a velocity between 850 and 910, where the faster twist rate barrel, this is called the, uh, I think it's called a heavy, <laughs> yeah, Supreme Heavy, a 1 in 18 twist is going to be, it's going to, um, it's going to be more optimized towards a, a faster window. Let's call it like 920 up to over a thousand feet per second. And these can be had for a hundred bucks. These, you know, where you have the whole barrel, the sleeve, the shroud, where it all just slides in and out of the gun, these are 300 to 350 ish, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Bottles, for all those different bottles I showed you, run between 250 and 300 bucks. So, you know, it's kind of a Lego gun like the Dreamline is, to where, where with the Dreamline you can easily switch all these different calibers out. Um, with this guy here, it's very easy to, to pick your barrel and shroud and bottle so that you have a lot of control over what, what you want to do. Personally, I know a lot of you guys are probably wondering, I'm not into the huge power thing. In a 25 cal, I like this in the compact much more than I like it in the sniper. Um, it was more maneuverable for me. There's less flip. I was able to be more accurate with, accurate with it. And, you know, in 25 cal, you're looking at 80 plus foot pounds with the accessory slug kit that you can buy from FX Air Guns or from Ken at SPA for 50 bucks. Or you're looking at, you know, I was easily able to achieve 70, 71, 72 foot pounds with good, long, efficient tunes with this gun in 25 cal. And that is a ton of power, so I don't want you to feel like you have to buy the slug kit. But if you are buying this to shoot only slugs, you want to get the long version. 
you want to get the slug kit and that way you've got maximum power to blast things up close and super far away with uh, with slugs okay the other thing that's got people super excited is the the new dual amp regulators and I made little little props for you guys one of them lives right there and the other one lives lives right about there and what's so cool about this is the valving for this gun lives back in here okay and so it only sees the pressure of this air of this regulator here okay this one here is dealing with the 250 bar that's coming out of this bottle right here and it's managing that and it's stepping it down to a much more manageable level for this regulator to have to to have to deal with and then this one steps it down for the valve and what that means to you is you've got this regulator in the back working much less hard so you're able to get like a higher resolution with it if you will um, better extreme spreads tighter standard deviations more precise control it becomes more efficient and it's and it's an able to, it's 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 able to do its job more freely without all of this extra pressure on it and it makes it a better regulator system okay that's got people super excited they've implemented this also in their new fx impact m3 which i i know a lot of you have been asking me to review that one as well i've i've asked for that one probably this winter from from fx because i try to have spacing and some other manufacturers in between and there's a lot of other brands that are important to a lot of other people. So, so look for that this winter, probably. All right. Um, what else has got people super excited about the Maverick is, let me get these stickers out of here, is it's 89cc power plenum. So what's a power plenum? Well, remember your valving lives, your valving lives back in here. Okay. And when you have a regulator and then a little bit of space and then you're valving, your valving can only gulp the air that's in this little bit of space, right? And often that's a limitation on how much power a gun can make. The Maverick was specifically designed to be a very high power air gun, all right? So with an 89cc, well, it's I don't know if they're counting in front of the rag or the whole thing, but behind this rag, You've got a huge chunk of, of air here, or excuse me, yeah, let's say if the valve's back in here, you've got a big old chunk of air here for that valve to be able to gulp from when it shoots and when it takes its breath to be able to shoot again. So you take that technology and you marry it with like a super large dual port uh, transfer port. You've got a gun that can swallow and and burp up a lot of air to give you guys a lot of power. And that's something that's got a lot of people excited. You're seeing people use these air guns now, 150, 200, 250 yards with slugs effectively. So, the, you know, get your mind in that box with the FX Maverick, all right? But in that little compact version, it's an, I have a feeling it's gonna be an awesome 50 and 100 yard air gun. And it's definitely where I'd be spending my money. Now, if I lived like up in Utah or out in Arizona where I had these big distances and I'm smacking ground squirrels at 200 yards, you know, and I can do the bipod and everything, I'm probably going to go with a setup like this. But for a woods walker, you know, your typical hunter, plinker, whatever, you're probably shorter. Um, and even that short one, I was getting 40, 50 foot pounds easy. And we'll get into all that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. Um... That's probably the bulk of what everybody's really excited about with this particular platform and the price. You know, you're in at 1450. You're pimped out. You're getting the best gun. I don't want to say the best gun. You're getting the biggest and most powerful gun for 1800, 1850 with a slug cut, with a slug kit. Those are very competitive numbers when you look at our at our industry. All right, um, accessories, walking you around the gun really quick. Donnie Ronan, moderator. These run about a buck 85. Um, Sports Match Rings UK scope rings. If you're buying your kit from Ken, I don't think he carries Sports Match, but he does carry FX No Limits rings, which are great. He also carries Masood's Eagle One, Eagle One Vision, Eagle Cam One Vision, whatever rings, adjustable. Those are phenomenal as well. 
All right, the scope is the new um, Element Titan. You're in the $800 price point right here. If you don't know the story behind Element, the brains and the people throwing the levers behind Element are Ted Beer, um, um, Matt Dubber, uh, Shane Keller, and the company that has financially backed it is FX Hair Guns. So you got a lot of power and brains behind this scope, guys, and it is next level. You're paying more, but you're getting more. We'll get into more of that in the, uh, in the review, all right? Saber Tactical is a company that works very closely with FX Air Guns, as does Donnie FL. Donnie FL is actually providing OEM moderators for FX that I believe they're building and constructing in Sweden, but this one here was not. This is one that's available through Ken over at Southern Precision Air Weapons, right? But Donnie FL and Saber Tactical have kind of joined forces and work with FX. They've come up with the Side Shot Magazine which is phenomenal. This is held every 35 and 40 grain slug that I've put in it, as well as all the 34, 25 and 34 grain pellets. And there is nothing, 5,000 rounds, flawless, not one misfeed about this. And it's super easy to load and use. But this side shot, this, or excuse me, this, this company, Saber Tactical, also makes accessories for the Maverick, all right? They make this bag rider, uh, bag rider, I think you're about $65 if I remember. Okay, best 65 bucks you'll ever spend on one of these. This bag rider is compatible with the OEM butt pad, so you don't have to have the Sabre butt stock. Okay, this has been phenomenal throughout my work where you can slide this up and down and easily control, um, easily control, you know, your point of impact down range. It's also adjust, the bag rider is also adjustable with this knob up and down so it's super easy to dial in okay that's almost a must-have if you're going to shoot one of these things off the bag it works great in the compact as well all right donnie F or excuse me saber also has their adjustable buttstock which fits the maverick and fits the impact you're about 250 dollar price point right here what's so cool is it's got a little button over here on this side where i can depress this button and i can adjust you know, where that hits my shoulder. What's also cool is by dropping that, I have a direct line of access to the micro or internal hammer spring adjuster on the external or, or macro external hammer spring adjuster. And I was using that quite often, okay? You can also loosen these two knobs, all right? And depress this little guy right here. And now I'm adjustable for my length of, of pull, all right? Kind of just drop it down, open it up. What the heck did I do? My knobs get, there you go, a little tight. And um, you just dial it back in. It's also adjustable for up and down. You release this guy right, right here, and now the whole buttstock slides, slides up and down. So and these little grippy guys, the best thing I found about these little grippy guys, I was talking to Ken Hicks over at Spa, and he was saying the, the exact same thing. The best thing about these is you can just kind of hang the thing on your shoulder, and it sits really, really steady. So. A good investment and um, and a lot of good things going on. Another really exciting thing that I just remembered that that's happening at, at FX. So we have all been complaining about their gauges for years. Um, for me personally, they've always been between 15 and 20 bar off, depending. Sometimes you win the lottery and get a good one. Well, I am very pleased to announce that FX has now partnered with Wicca gauges, W-I-K-A. Wicca are a made in the USA, global, commercial, high precision, high endurance application gauge that you're seeing throughout industries everywhere. And FX is going to them um, across their entire line. Um, there's different size gauges. Basically, basically what's shipping with your Maverick now is this little guy up here, which reads your bottle pressure and Let's see. Yep, and this one. And this little guy, which sits right here, which reads your regulator pressure. So you have one segment in the rear for very precise regulator pressure uh, readings. And then you've got one, and you've got the original up front that just tells you how much air is in the bottle. It's really not, uh, really not all that critical. But um, it's good to see them going, going to this across their lineup. 
Now, what I've been told by FX is that ultimately, as they run through these and Wicca as a company comes back up online and boost their production back to where they were pre-COVID, that's been the challenge and that's been the delay, you're going to start seeing these giant Wicca gauges up here on the front and up here on the back. I spent a lot of time tuning with this gauge and it is a phenomenal tuning tool. Um, if you own a Maverick currently and you want to buy one of these, um, Ken Hicks is telling me that you can get these at Huma. Um, this one says FX on it. I don't know if it's one of the original batches that they got originally from Wicca, but they sent it to me and I've used it and it's been, um, it's been absolutely phenomenal because this guy, as much as I'm grateful for its precision, it's very difficult to read even with my old man glasses. So I am very much in a hurry for them to get to uh, move on to these, uh, these big gauges. Oops. Now, um, kind of doing my show and tell a little bit here in the beginning. <laughs> Another option you have in a, and for me it's been a pretty darn good option, is the new Sekhmet gauge. All right? It's reading 129 bar because the tune that's currently on here is, where's my compact tune? Um, yep, there it is right there. And this is one of the pro tunes for the compact I'm gonna share with you. My regulators are set at 155 and 130, all right? Now, if I were to go outside in the warm, this toggling between 128 and 129 here is gonna cement into 130. It changes based on your, your temperature, okay? I'll put up here in the screen all of the stuff that this gauge does. Um, you're basically $100 for these from Ken. You can also get from Ken um, for another 25 bucks is a firmware upgrading kit. So every time Sekhmet comes out with um, updates for this gauge, you can update that firmware for yourself and take advantage of any, um, any new concepts or ideas or corrections they put, it, they put into here. But I'll put up on the screen all of the stuff that this does um, where it will be super useful up here on the bottle. But where I found the greatest value in it, as you can see, it keeps timing out. I can't stand that. Where I found the greatest value in it was getting very precise readings for my regulator adjustments. Now, very interestingly, I did some tests outside, and these read within one, the new Wicca gauge for FX in this Sekhmet, um, who are both promising extremely exacting results, read within one bar of one another. And I was super, super impressed with that. Um, so good to know. If you want to know what your battery life is, you just kind of hold there on the top. You're 100%. It's got menu buttons on the left and right. But uh, into, um, well, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself. But switching these gauges out, guys, is super, super easy. Get yourself some, I think they call these X seals. You can get them from FX or you can get them from, um, probably get them from Ken. I'd try there first. And then to undo these gauges, I literally take a socket like this, put it over the top, and I unscrew it. Everything's by hand. You don't ever, like I find them to where you're just touching and just a little bit firm and seated, pressing on that seal, and you're good to go. This one indexed better kind of up and down, so rather than cranking it all the way around, I kind of left it forward, forward like that and um, put a little lube put a little silicone o-ring lube on there so that when that gauge bottom right there interfaces with that seal it's not twisting it it can kind of you know seed itself into a into a good position all right um yeah you know that's a quick run around the gun and then you get all the fx goodies their smooth twist uh x supreme barrel liners or dual stage adjustable trigger uh, this is actually an AR grip, a real AR grip, so you can do anything you want there. And it's just a lot of good stuff going on. Okay, that was a lot. That was my version of quickly getting you around the gun. Oh, forgot to say, the pick rail up on top has 20 MOA built in for long distance shooting. Super, super cool stuff. That way you don't always find yourself having to purchase aftermarket adjustable scope mounts, um, although 
on a gun like this, I would probably invest in them. It's a wise investment even then. It makes a zeroing in your scope quicker, easier, and it makes the scope more reliable. But don't feel like you have to. It'll work fine without it. <sighs> okay. That was the fast version. Now it's time to slow down and get into the good stuff. Let me clear a little pathway for myself here. <clears throat> Realizing now that I just barely touched on that Sekhmet gauge, and maybe I'll talk about it more in the end. But um, what I really liked about it, like I said, was the precision that it offers me running it back here so I can see exactly what's going on with the regs. This has been good. You can kind of get within, you know, two, three bar and know where you're at with this. Where this, you know what bar you're at. And what I didn't like about this gauge is it has a 20 second max timeout where, and it takes more than 20 seconds to go through this and tune the two regulators. So I'm like, like a pretzel or playing twister trying to, you know, reactivate that thing. And you'll see here in a minute, I'll probably, I'll show you, I'll show it to you. I didn't like that. So hopefully they'll change that. Um, occasionally I got some screen blackout lockups, which is where the whole screen just goes black. And if that happens, the owner's manual says that if that happens, um, you just attach the, this is a magnetic battery charger. It just clips to the front of the gauge. You just attach it to the front of the gauge like so. And it, it resets it and it makes that blackout thing go away. That happened um, over a week, like maybe three times. I don't know what causes it, but it, it happened. Battery life has been super, super good. Um, even tuning, you can go... I would venture to say weeks and weeks and weeks on a battery charge. It's not something. And if you're just going to kind of shoot the gun, months. So battery has been great. The only other thing I didn't like about it was that, you know, they're a newer company. So communication has been kind of slow. Um, they come into the country in Delaware. They ship to the dealers out of Texas. I don't know where they're from. I'm guessing Asia somewhere. So the communication has been slow, so I would caution you, if you're going to buy one, make sure you're buying one from a dealer that you like and trust, like Ken, over at Spa, so that he can be your point of compact, contact if you, have, if you have support questions, if you have warranty issues, you know, Ken can have your back with that. Don't feel like you're necessarily going to get that from Sekhmet, because I did it. Like, I'd email them and get nothing for a week. And then I'd email them again and get like nothing for a week. Then email them again and it's like, oh, sorry. And then, and I just don't want you guys to have to deal with that. And I want you to know as awesome as this thing is as a tuning tool, that's what you're getting over on the factory side. But a lot of people have been buying them. A lot of people like them. The reliability has been really good. And, um, and I foresee a lot of people really digging this and using this as a good tool. Okay. That's enough about segment. <sighs> All right, let's slow it down. All right, so FX Maverick Tuning Guide, things to know. Again, it's archived over at the Airgun Nation Forum. One, I'm going to turn this around so that you can see this. If I can unstick my prop here. All right, do I have that in the right place? No, <laughs> it's more like right here. There we go. So that's right there. And this is right here. Okay, number one. The pressure gauge in the back. Okay. The pressure gauge in the rear can only see the pressure of the regulator that it has a direct line of sight to. All right. You've got a regulator here. You've got a regulator here. All right. This gauge can only see to this regulator. So this gauge is reading this regulator, which is good and which is fine because this is the regulator that's actually doing the work for this valve. Okay. So when I tune, I'm looking, when I tune, I'm looking at this regulator. I'm looking at them both, but this is the one that I can actually see. Okay. I'm going to take you through how to do this in a little bit. But you also need to be able to see what's going on with this regulator's pressure, all right? This gauge over here, 
that's not what this shows. What this gauge shows is how much air is in this bottle, okay? So in order for this gauge to see what's going on with this rag, this rag needs to be opened up all of the way or set to its maximum so that, the, so that this is kind of just like an open tube and now this gauge here can read what's going on up here. That's the basic concept of that. Just keep that in mind. Don't let it freak you out. I'm gonna show you all that in a little bit. Okay, two. To lower regulator pressure, one must first depressurize the system, okay? FX has been training us with the impact, with the Dreamline, with the crown and the crown continuum, that it is okay to reduce regulator pressure while that regulator's under load, meaning you don't have to degas it, okay? That is not the case with these new, new dual reg systems. It's not the case in this gun. I'm guessing it's not the case in the new Impact M3. I don't know. Do your homework. I'll get into that this winter. But just something to be aware of. You've got to depressurize the system before I reduce regulator pressure. I'll show you that in a minute. Don't worry. Okay, three. When removing and replacing the external bottle, okay, do so completely to avoid seal damage and keep things lubed, all right? Well, what do I mean by that? Well, there's a video out there that FX put out and not knocking FX, although I, you know, it's my job to disagree with them sometimes. You know, in that video, they would say, um, unscrew the bottle partially to let the air bleed out and then put it back when you're doing your tuning. When I did that, I was getting issues with the, the O-ring in this bottle getting kind of caught up and bound up and you could hear it. The O-ring would like partially grab and it would pop and it would sizzle and it would snap kind of depending on where it was unscrewed. And I unscrewed it to where it was kind of dangly and it was still doing that. So, um, and I actually wrecked the, val I wrecked the seal inside one of these bottles, which is replaceable. But when you're, when you're tuning, take the bottle off, put it back on so that you don't want to wind up doing what I did. And I want to show you that. The other thing is keep the threads um, for this, for the, where the bottle screws onto, keep it lubed with super lube synthetic grease or some kind of good quality synthetic grease. Okay. Out in front of the threads is like a probe where the seal in the bottle kind of grabs onto and seals up against. Keep that lubed with super lube food quality grade o-ring lube okay very sparingly with both you don't want this crap working its way up into your regs and your valving and if you're unscrewing your bottle and it's stiff that's because there's no grease on the threads all right so once i started doing that these bottles came on and off super easy and i stopped tearing up the seals also inside of the bottle okay so Know that so that you don't follow my treachery. All right. Um, always, number four, always adjust and seat the reg slowly and with care. All right. If you watch my FX factory tour video where they invited me out to Sweden to film out there for you guys, their, their facility, you can see the girls in there making and testing regulators. That amp regulator, it's tough as nails. It's a 180 bar regulator. And it can take a lot of abu abuse, but you don't want to be like spinning these things open so it's getting slammed with a bunch of air. You want to open it gradually so all those little plates and springs in there can, you know, kind of adjust to that. And that's just going to mean longevity and more precision. Uh, more pre precision, okay? More precision for you out of the regulator. Also, quick, quick tip. Uh, some of you were asking me how low you can go on the reg. The amp regulators and the guns we get here that make 80 foot pounds are the same exact amp regulators that they get in places of Europe um, where their guns have a 12 foot pound max. So you can go low on that regulator. And I did and got awesome results. And I'll share that with you in a little bit. Okay. Never open up the rearmost regulator past flush. Okay. I'm going to show you that. But the rearmost regulator adjustment screw is right here. The front adjustment screw is underneath. I'm going to show you later. Um, when you're unscrewing this, you'll see the middle of it kind of screwing out. Never unscrew it past flush. I, I bring it up to flush 
and maybe like an eighth or a quarter a turn more so I can just catch my fingernail on it. When I've hit that place, then I know that that regulator is open enough to where that gauge in the back can see through it to what's going on in this regulator up here. If you go past that, you risk blowing out the little seal that's in there, and that's going to be a little bit of a pain in the hiney for you guys to, uh, for you guys to fix. All right. <sighs> Number five, keep regulators adjusted to within 30, bar, 30 to 40 bar of one another, okay? That is on the FX website. That is in the FX owner's manual. Meaning, when I adjust this regulator and this regulator, I always want 34, 30 to 40 bar in between them. So if I'm 180 on this one, I'm 140 on this one. You know, you guys kind of get what I'm saying there, okay? The extreme low is 25 bar difference. The extreme high is 50. Once you get to 50, you reach point of a point of diminishing return. Once you get to uh, 25, the gun, I don't know how well you're gonna hear this. After you fire, it takes too long for that big 89cc reservoir to fill its lungs and take a breath. I'm gonna shut up here. Well, you actually, I don't have to shut up. I can show you on the gauge. That's what's cool about these uh, segment gauges. Okay, watch the bar. Okay. The more, if you're, if you're closer to the 40 side, that's gonna fill quicker and be ready for your next shot. If you're closer to the 25 side or 30 side, it's gonna fill slower. Because I like to push the envelope of everything, I did all of my tuning with a 25 bar differential and my refill time was about two, two and a half seconds, which is much more time than I needed to take the shot, cycle the gun, and line up my next shot. So that two, two and a half seconds goes by pretty quick when you're doing all that. So I don't want you to feel that you gotta run it at a 40, 50 bar differential. There are, there are some tuning theories out there that running it higher makes this reg work harder and makes it more precise. I didn't find that. I don't know that that's wrong, but I found that just a 25 bar between the two, both regs, nice and relaxed, I got some like startling, startlingly good ESs and SDs, which I'll, which I'll share with you. So 30 to 40 bar difference between, between the two, with 25 and 50 being the two extremes. Move them up together, move them down together, all right? Six, prior to taking a new regulator reading after adjustment, dry fire five times to settle the right reg. So you're gonna see me when I'm adjusting this gun for you in a little bit, I'm gonna be dry firing this five times after I adjust the regulator to get all those little plates and springs inside the reg to kind of settle down and settle into their place before you're gonna get an accurate, consistent reading out of that regulator, that, out of both of them, but that regulator that the valve sees. I also found that when I was actually, after I'd set up the regs and I'm tuning the gun on the bench um, with the hammer spring, that hammer spring took a good four or five leaded shots under load to settle into the place where it was gonna stay. So when you're tuning, remember that five dry fires, five leaded to really, before you run, dive into a shot chart and before you expect the gun to do what it's gonna do through that entire shot string, okay? Um, seven, well, I covered seven. That's the, to lead fire five times when, when you, um, when you get into adjusting that hammer spring or when you're on the bench and in your final stages. Okay. Number eight, make small one eighth turn hammer spring adjustments to the internal micro hammer spring adjuster inside the external power wheel. I, I had a typo making small one eighth turn adjustments to the internal hammer spring adjuster inside this power wheel will reward, okay? To do all these tunes here, I was never more than three or three and a half turns on the inside of um, this internal, this micro hammer spring adjuster, which I'll show you. Usually I was a quarter turn, three eighths of a turn for these big power tunes. I was moving it up three, three and a half turns. Don't go nuts with that because you're going to overshoot the sweet spot. My take, the takeaway is an eighth of a turn can make a difference between a 20 foot per second extreme spread across the string or a 10 foot per second extreme spread across the string. Okay. 
That being said, let me kind of throw in a little pro tip here. I see, and I was talking to Ken about this, and he totally agrees. I see a lot of people getting fixated, like I'll do a review of Brand X, and it'll have a, an extreme spread of 25 feet per second across its shot, shot string. And then someone comes along in the comments and they go, that sucks, my FX gets 10 feet per second extreme spread, or you could do better than that, Steve. Yes, I can do better than that if I wanna put in more time fiddling. We all can. But the takeaway is that whether you're 10 feet per second extreme spread or 25 feet per second extreme spread across your shot chart, it usually doesn't amount to a hill of beans when you're shooting out at 50 and 100 yards. Even at 100 yards, I've seen 25 foot per second extreme spreads have little to no difference on point of impact. The reason I share with that with you guys is I see a lot of you getting on that bunny trail like, Oh no, I got to get my gun to with a 10 ES, you know, and this 25 is no good and you're and you're killing yourselves trying to do don't do that to yourselves, guys. Any anywhere inside 25 and you're going to be good at 50 and 100 yards. Yeah, it's exciting when you get a tenner. <laughs> and I'm going to share some of them with you here, but don't freak out and beat up your gun and beat yourself up if you, if you can't. Okay. All that matters is the accuracy. Oh. On those little 1/8 inch turns, guys, that's for dialing in on the internal hammer spring. That's for dialing in your accuracy. Because what you'll find, like say, I'm getting ahead of myself with the tunes here, is with a 34 grain pellet, it may be really accurate at 905. No, it may be really accurate at 895, but not at 9905 at 100 yards. And these little micro adjuster back here helps you find those little veins of gold to where your gun is just like, and it just lands in the same hole every time. That's what that's all about. That's one of the big benefits to this micro adjuster inside of the macro adjuster because um, it, it makes the whole platform have the ability to be more accurate. People really like that. Okay, number nine. This is a good one. Don't overwork your regs and valving. There's no need and you'll get better results and reliability. Okay, that's 180 bar max on, this regula on these regulators what FX says before you can break them. There's no limit on the on how low you can run them, apparently. Um, I see a lot of people going right to 150 bar on the reg, 160, 170, because they know 180 is the max. And they think, well, I better get to 170 if I want the most power out of it. Guys, I was getting huge power out of this gun running like 70 and 80 bar on the reg back here. And even in the little shorty version where you have to kind of twist things up, because remember that short barrel needs more air to do the same work. 120, 125, 130 bar for some big power tunes. So, and I found that when tuning the Crown Continuum, and I found that when tuning the, um, the FX Dreamline Sabre in those tuning guides, I mean, so don't, don't overwork everything because you'll hear it inside your gun. You try to run a 150 bar reg, it's like, it's like it, sounds, it sounds like somebody got coughed and got punched in the chest at the same time. It's like, <coughs> it's like working so hard in there. It's like all manic. You know, you don't want that inside your gun. You don't want that tug of war. You don't want to turn your reg way up. So now your valve spring is like all bound up and everyone's trying to fight one another. That is not good tuning. Good tuning is trying to ride out that low, those low valve spring tensions, those low reg pressures. And I'm going to share them with you, and you're going to get some badass results doing that instead of reading what you read on the forums, twisting up the power so high. Okay? Um, number 10, last one. Then we're going to get into the fun stuff. I don't know. I've been having fun. Have you guys been having fun? Hopefully you're learning something. All right, number 10, keep your velocities and harmonics in check for the best accuracy, all right? So everyone's into speed and power, and I get that. I get that that's important if you want to reach out to 150, 200, 250 yards because you need for that slug to be having some energy left, some hair still on it when it gets there, right? Um, but for 50 and even 100 yard shooting and 125 yard shooting guys, in a 25 cal, 
45, 50 foot pounds is more than enough. And when you have a, a more settled down gun with more settled down guts, where you don't have the regs and the valve working so hard against one another, okay, there's a lot less movement. And you pull the trigger and it's just kind of like, boom, boom. It's like shooting spitballs in school. It's just boom. And I'll just kind of land in the same hole down there, moving, you know, 850, 880, 900, 910 feet per second, all right? You don't have to do this 940, 950, 1,000 feet per second stuff um, to be good at those distances. And honestly, it's easier to shoot well if you don't because you're going to get less movement in all of this when you're shooting. And remember, you've got that slow shot cycle in an air gun. You know, I shoot powder burners like you guys. This is not like shooting my AK or my AR or whatever. Um, things take a while to happen. So, especially with that longer barrel, go easy on your velocities, go easy on your tuning and your pressures and your valving, and you're going to find yourself being more accurate. Okay? All right. Drum roll. So this is the guides. The guide is up on the Airgun Nation forum, remember. I put it there for y'all. It's on its own. It's currently stickied. So, um, yeah. You've got that. All right, now here's the step-by-step. -step. God, I wish I had this when I really wish I had this when I was first figuring out this gun. I was forced to kind of muddle through it because I didn't have like a true step-by-step -step to getting through it. Um, where nothing was left, nothing is left out of this, guys. So you can't mess up. You, you just can't if you follow this. And it's easy, and here we go. I do have some notes up here at the top. I think I'm going to quickly read them, and then we'll get into the instructions. Some of these notes are um, kind of recovering what I covered in the guide. All right. Always set forward, always set the forward most regulator pressure, always set the forward most regulator's pressure higher than the rear most regulator's pressure, okay? This reg always has to have more pressure than this one because this is just stepping down the pressure from this bottle to make this reg's job easier so that this reg can work with more refinement. So remember, 30 to 40 bar. I had a great time at 25. I, if I own this gun, which I think I'm going to keep this one. Hopefully that's okay with Ken and FX. Um, I, 25 was good. And I felt like that was uh, kind of that, that relaxed. That allowed this regulator to kind of relax and really do some good things with ES and SD. If you take it up to 50 bar difference, things are going to happen quicker, but there's more pressure on that reg. So it can't breathe as well. It's like you trying to breathe laying on the floor with somebody sitting on you. All right, versus just trying to breathe standing here. That's a great way to think about it, all right? A 30 to 40 bar setting between regs is ideal with a 25 and 50 bar um, being the two extremes. We covered that. A 25 bar differential will be refill ready for the next shot in about two and a half seconds. We covered that. Um, a 30 to 40 bar differential will decrease this refill ready time. When I say refill, ready for the next shot. That power plenum is taking its next gulp of air for you, okay? We covered this. Um, Rearmost regulator pressures like 70 and 80 bar are an ideal place to begin for high power and shot count in 25 cal. Ideal, good, where you wanna start. Rearmost regulator pressures like 120 and 130 bar are ideal for max power in 25. I was getting, you know, FX is claiming 80 with their slug kit, okay? What the hell is that noise? Sounds like somebody's dog is humping a cat or something. That was weird, it sounded like a ghost almost. So, you know, even with their slug kit, you know, where they're at 80 bar, and I'm nipping the heels of that, or we're nipping the heels of that, running 120, 130 bar with how the gun comes at 70, 72 foot-pounds. You know, don't feel like you need to crank that up like you see in this video. This is a heavier hammer. So it's probably going to, in a, I don't know, yep, heavier hammer. And this probably changes the tension on the spring. This guy down here making that spring have a little bit more preload on it. That might require higher reg pressures like 135, 140, 145, 
whatever. You can experiment with that. But for these guns as they come, and to be able to make a ton of power, you don't need to go there with your reg pressure. <clears throat> and I recommend you don't. Okay. Um, this is a good one. Rear most regu... Oh, wait, no. The above regulator... The above regulator ideal ranges... So what do we say? 70, 80, 120, 130. Ideal ranges... All right, apply to the five, six, and 700 millimeter barrels. So what that means to you is whether you buy the compact, the VP, the sniper with your five or six or 700 millimeter barrel, all of these rules still apply. You're still, I would still say start out at 70, 80 on the rag and work your way up, okay? No matter what, because I had good success in that, let's call it 70 to 130 range across the 500 and the 700, so you're going to be somewhere in the middle with the 600 on the VP, okay? So don't think that because you got the compact, you need to have a 150 bar rag. <laughs> you don't, all right? Um, keep the bottle threads and seal interface lube throughout all of the on-off with the bottle. We'll show you that. And to, dec to decrease regulator pressure, the gun needs to be completely depressurized. All right, we covered that. All right, here we go. So... The tune that is on this gun currently, this is kind of funny, believe it or not, is this one, 34 grain, yep. So the tune that is on this gun is actually the tune that I left off with, with the compact, the little barrel, the little bottle, all right? And I just slapped on the big bottle and the big barrel to, to begin the video for you guys that I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna un I'm gonna take those out as we go here. So that's the tune that's currently on here. I'm currently running 155 bar front rag and 130 bar back rag, which we saw. Yep, there it is. All right. <clears throat> and my internal hammer spring is um. Oh, it's is it this one or was it my max? Yeah, it was this one. Yeah, it was this one. Okay, and my internal hammer spring is three quarters counterclockwise from where it was. So for all of these shot charts, which we're gonna get into after I show you how to tune these two regs, um, I just worked from how the gun was delivered to me from FX and SPA, and SPA didn't fiddle with it, okay? That was a request I had. Don't change nothing, don't fiddle with nothing, just get it to me. I want to know how it comes to FX USA from Sweden. And that was my starting point with this internal hammer spring adjuster on this power wheel. Okay. So when I say, when I say regs 155 and 130, that's the one and two power wheel on number seven. Okay. That means I've rotated this power wheel. In case none of you have ever seen this before. Let me drop this guy so you guys can see what's going on. Try to do this wrong-handed. You know, you rotate these. The bottom, the six o'clock position, is where is the reading is, is how you read it. Okay. The when it's on adjust, you're sticking a little Allen in that hole, and that's where you can adjust that micro adjustment on the inside, where you're changing the compression or the preload on the spring that's in there. This does the same thing, but it does it in more of a macro way with less less definition or less refinement. Okay. But um, seven, there's my seven, all right, and then with this internal hammer spring counterclockwise, three quarters of a turn, all right. The reason I'm sharing with you where I started is so that you know that when I'm changing it here back to when we're gonna, we're gonna just grab a tune here and we're gonna put it on the gun, you know why I'm fiddling with that internal hammer spring, okay? Okay. So let's put that up there. So let's do one of my favorite tunes for this gun, and that was, um, and I'm gonna show you those compact tunes later. We're gonna come back to them in great detail. <laughs> so don't worry about that. I really liked, yeah, this was, this was badass. These were both pretty badass. Um, let's do this one, okay. <clears throat> well, yeah, let's do that. So the gun arrived to me tuned 
like strangely hot. It was pushing, it was pushing a 25 grain to like a thousand and ten feet per second. It was a good tune, but the, those regs were really high, and and I don't know why they were pushing that 25 grain to a thousand feet per second. Um, the only thing I can figure is maybe, maybe it was a compact gun. It was probably a compact gun that FX USA grabbed off the shelf and and it wound up with like a, a sniper barrel in it. That's the only thing I can figure because that's a pellet that you want at 850 to 890, let's call it. Okay. Well, then, so I said to myself, well, maybe it's maybe it was set up for the 34 grain. So I ran a shot chart with a 34 grain and that thing was like alligator teeth. You know, I'm like, well, it's not that. So I don't know what was going on. So that's another reason it's important for you to know this because it's super easy to put your gun into a super sweet harmonic place. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's put this tune on it. This is a 25 grain. This is an FX 25 grain, <laughs> an FX 25 grain pellet tune. JSB makes these for FX. This is the JSB 25.39, however, if you've been able to watch my factory tour video of JSB in the Czech Republic and my myth-busting interview with them, they do actually use a special and brand new die lot for FX when they make these pellets for FX and they make them in giant batches. That's why the consistency tends to be better with these over the off-the-shelf JSBs. A little pro tip there for you, right? But. Um, this is a great all-around pellet for this gun. It wants to be, like I said, 850, 890. That's kind of the magic window. And I wanted it to be, I got 883 as an average with an extreme spread of 11, a standard deviation of 2.18, 145 shots at 44 foot-pounds, guys. Very ideal for the JSB and FX 25 grain pellet. That's with the 580 cc carbon fiber bottle. <clears throat> Regs 95 for the front one, 70 for the back. Power wheel number two. Well, we'll get into that. Power wheel number two. I'm not to get ahead of myself. Internal hammer spring is zero, which means I didn't touch it from how it came from, how it was delivered to me from, from FX. All right, so, so what do we got to do to get that regs? Because these regs right now, remember, are 155, 130. What do we got to do to get those down to uh, 95 and 70? I think the first thing I'm going to do, so I don't forget, if you remember this internal hammer spring for this compact Pro Tune was three quarters of a turn counterclockwise. <clears throat> so I have to fix that. So to get it back to where I was. So I'm going to flip this to the adjust place. You grab yourself a little Allen. This is a 1.5 millimeter. I take a little silver Sharpie, mark it up on the top so I have a good idea of where I'm at. Okay. You'll slide it in there and then you'll feel it kind of, you'll feel it grab left or right. All right. So I had increased, counterclockwise increases hammer spring tension opposite of what you'd think clockwise decreases it so I've gone counterclockwise three quarters of a turn all right <clears throat> so let's let's undo that all right so there is wait yeah so we went clock yeah we gotta go to clockwise now to undo it <laughs> getting tired guys already all right so rotate clockwise two till that's facing me all right, now I've undone that and I've set that hammer spring back to zero or how it arrived is how I'm defining zero, okay? <clears throat> Power wheel number two, boop, 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 super easy. Bring that power wheel two down to the sixth position. There it is, okay, so that's all taken care of. So now all we gotta do is worry about the regs. I probably don't need these stickers anymore. I think you guys know where they're at, but we'll leave them on here for a little bit longer. <laughs> okay, so I think they're cool. All right, so one, step number one, what do we do? Unscrew and remove the external air bottle completely. 
and set it aside. All right, so here we go. We're gonna rotate this counterclockwise. The first time you rotate this, it might be really stiff because those threads may not be greased, okay? You heard the valve in here close, you heard the little degas. There it is, we're setting it aside. Stay. I don't wanna to get too disorganized here. Got a lot to cover. You can see, by the way, there's the threads for the bottle. This piece out in front of it that is polished smooth. That's the smooth part that interfaces with the seal inside the bottle. Okay. Those are the parts you want to keep lubed. So we've done that. Number two, open up clockwise. The rearmost regulator to flush only never pass. Well, here's the rearmost regulator. I have to open this so that this gauge back here can see what's going on with this rag. You always have to adjust number one and then number two. Okay. So the way I'm going to open it is with a two and a half millimeter Allen. Okay. And I just go a little bit at a time. Okay. You heard it dump all of its air. Just go a little bit of a time until you can catch your fingernail on it because you want it flush just a little bit more. I'm going to do this so I can see it. There you go. Just starting to catch my fingernail on it. Okay. Yep. Now that I can catch my fingernail on it, that's open. All right. That's been opened up. So now. Now we have a direct line of sight to what's going on at this gauge up here in the front. <clears throat> okay. And you can hear the air is perched from the gun and you can actually watch it doing so. This is a good example. I'm glad this is happening on camera. See this Sekhmet gauge? That's that blackout I was telling you about. It refuses to turn on. So apparently the way you fix that is you take this and you line it up, and apparently that like shorts it out. Oh, come on, you're gonna dud out on me. All right. Nope. Totally dud it out. Okay, I'm gonna try this same thing, guys, but I'm gonna plug this into the charger. So, excuse me. Hopefully, this will fix this. Figures that would happen on camera. But you know what? That's the way these things go, and that's what I'm talking about. All right, so there it is. It's charging. Good. All right. And now, miraculously, my Sekhmet gauge works. There's something, I don't know what happened, but somehow, sometimes these little pins get shorted out, I think, when you're touching it, because, you know, the sweat in your hand or whatever conducts some electricity, and it shorts out the gauge. And the way to reset it is to connect that little charger and plug it in, and apparently it fixes it. It was in the owner's manual, so that might just be a normal part of the ownership experience. But anyway, you can see that everything's empty, because the gauge is reading zero now. And that's what you want, okay? Okay. If, and this happened to me quite a bit, if opening up, if opening up this regulator number two does not dump the air, I like to take the power wheel and put it to one to kind of reduce, reduce the, the hammer spring tension as much as I can, and I'll dry fire the gun, okay? that will create a dump. For me, it usually started to do that within two or three or four shots if opening this gauge didn't do it. So you can do one or the other, open the gauge or just dry fire it. Do not dry fire it without air in there. You can damage your valving. And don't dry fire it past, any more past than what you need to with air in there to get those regs to dump. Um, 
Number three, reduce external hammer spring adjuster to position one and dry fire only until rags begin to dump. All right, so that's that. Allow a moment for all the air to drain. We had several moments there. Thank you, Sekhmet. Okay, number five, gently close clockwise the forwardmost regulator until it lightly seats. Okay, so we got to reset this front rag. Super easy to do. Take off a little bipod here. All right, same Allen, little hole here on the bottom. Okay, I can close this because there's no air in here. And I'm gonna close it until very gentle, guys, when you close this. You don't wanna be crazy. It just stopped with very light pressure. It just stopped right there. And open it, oh, about three quarters of a turn. Okay, that should have it at around 50 bar, if I remember 40, 50 bar. If you're a 12 foot pound guy, you're probably like a quarter turn to start. Okay, so I've reset that regulator down to a low, low level. Okay, replace the external air bottle. Okay, when I replace this air bottle, all right, this regulator is now, this forward rep most regulator is now going to be able to be seen by this pressure gauge in the back, and that's what we want to be able to tune it. You hear it filling up. It's filling, this bottle is filling this giant 89cc power plenum, okay? So have plenty of air on tap when you're doing this because you're going to be filling this a lot for tuning because this this power plenum is going to suck basically 180, 100 cc's out of your 580 cc bottle right off the bat just to fill it, okay? I'll put my, bi well, I'm going to leave my bipod off. Now, when I turn on my gauge, I'm at 83 bar. I've gone too far, okay? I had a senior moment. I had a big senior moment. This first reg, guys, I'm aiming for 95 bar. <laughs> the second one's gonna be 70. So I had a major senior moment. So we're gonna be fine at this pressure. Good night, Steve. You are getting old. Right now, you keyboard warriors are probably flaming me for that in the comments, which is fine. We all make mistakes. That's part of part of being a human. All right, so I want 95 on that first reg. So where am I at? Come on, Sekhmet. All right, I'm at 77. All right, I'm going to slowly start to open this until I get up around 95. You see that pressure coming up. And there's the timeout. It drives me nuts. 20 second max timeout on that segment, guys. Hopefully they fix that down the road. All right, I'm in the ballpark of that 95 that I want reg number one set at. So I'm gonna get this on my power wheel two, which is gonna be the, the right power wheel number for this setting. I'm gonna dry fire this and see where it settles into. And we settled into 93. Okay, so we're gonna just crack that a little bit more. There's 94. Little bitty crack, there's 95. Let's dry fire it. Four. I don't think it's that important to be super perfect with this, guys, but I wanted the integrity of being perfect for these tunes because I know a lot of you guys are going to be relying on them. So I put in the time to make it perfect. These tunes are all going to get you 95 to 98% of the way there, and then you're going to be making micro adjustments to either your regulator pressure or your internal hammer spring 
to uh, to get the velocity perfect for what it is that uh, what it is that you're doing for accuracy. 94. Okay, crack it again. All right, 90. This is this has been my experience. What you're seeing right here, this has been normal. Like, I'll adjust that rag up a little bit, shoot it, seats. Adjust it up a little bit, shoot it, it seats. Until finally, it kind of seats into a place that you want to be permanently. What am I doing on pressure? Got a little under 200 bar in here because I filled this thing twice now. And that's good. See, that's settled into 95, which is a good place to be. All right, so now I'm gonna give a little bit more air again. And we'll start adjusting that rearmost gauge. All right, so now we've successfully set gauge number one to the 95 bar we want for the tune. Now we gotta set gauge number two. Now remember, gauge number two has been opened all the way up so that our pressure gauge in the back can see through it to what's going on up here at this rag. So now I have to close this gauge. And remember, I can't close it until I've purged all the air from the system. So. Um, uh, where am I? Okay. So gently close clockwise forward most regulator until it lightly seats, then open it counterclockwise three quarters of a turn. Number six, replace the external air bottle. Number seven, refill the bottle to max bar because much of it is just dumped into the 89cc power plenum. We've done all this. Number eight, slowly open up the forward most regulator counterclockwise to the desired pressure observing at rearmost pressure gauge. We did that, we put it on 95. Um, dry fire five times to help seat the forward regulator. We did that. 10, remove the external air bottle completely and set aside. All right, so this is the step we're on now. And I can actually put my bipod back on for this. There it is. Because now I'm gonna be adjusting that guy. All right, remove it and set it aside. There it goes. Okay, so I'm full of air. My power plenum and my regs are full of air and I can't really open this anymore. So I'm gonna put this on the lowest power, take a shot to dump it. Didn't dump. There it goes. Normally it takes two or three or four for me to begin. Okay, once all that air bleeds out, oh, where am I? Okay, lower the external hammer spring adjuster to position one and dry fire only until regs begin to dump. We just did that, they are beginning to dump. Allow a moment for all of the air, number 12, allow a moment for all of the air to drain from the gun, we're doing that. Number 13, gently close clockwise the rearmost regulator until it lightly seats, then open three quarters of a turn. Wait for all that air to go. Just opening this so I can see it, guys. Still hissing a little bit. <laughs> All right, there it goes. I'm gonna close this until it very lightly seats. Okay, I'm gonna open half a turn with this now that I'm all gun shy off the first one. I look like I don't know what the hell I'm talking about and I haven't done this. So there's half a turn. All right. So now, because that's only open half a turn, that's a pretty closed reg. So when I screw this bottle on to repressurize the system, this gauge back here, is going to read only this rearmost reg because it won't be able to see through it to what's going on at this reg anymore, the forwardmost reg anymore. Okay. 
Okay, we're sealed up. How much pressure we got in here? Ooh, a little over 200 bar. I'm gonna put more in there. This is one thing you don't really see talked about is how air intensive it is tuning a Maverick with this big bottle. Or excuse me, with this big 89cc power plant. But that's just the that's just the deal. If you want all of that air to be able to pull from as a reservoir to generate a ton of power, it's kind of like having an air gun with two bottles on it. One that's 580 cc and another's that and another that's 89. All right, so now, where are we at? 63 bar on that rear regulator. Put this on two, fire it a couple times, we'll probably stay at that 63. Yeah, that one's seated up pretty quick. All right, so now, I'm gonna open this regulator until I get to that 70 bar, and then I will be at 95 bar for the front, 70 bar for the back. How can I do this so you guys can see it? I'll do it like this. Yeah, that way we can both see it. All right, 70 bar. We're close. I'm going counterclockwise right now. You can hear every time I turn it, it that regulator offers another little puff of air past it into the power plenum. Oh, son of a gun. So there's 70. Let's dry fire it. Here, taking that breath. Sounds like a turbo. I like it. Sixty-nine. So it wants a little bit more. Where am I? The hell, I'm all screwed up trying to do this on camera for y'all. Seventy-one. Seventy. I like it. Seventy. All right. So what have we just done, guys? We've successfully moved this. We've successfully moved the Maverick from a uh, compact tune, a little 500 barrel, 300 bottle, to a Sniper Pro Tune. Okay. Now our regs, our front one's at 95, our back one's at 70, our power wheel is indeed at number two, and our internal hammer spring is at has been reset back to zero because I did that first, okay? I know that was a little bit convoluted because I had a, um, a brain fart. Oh, load. Okay, because I had a brain fart and... Um, but normally, I'm trying to think, when I did all this, it's probably five minutes or less. Because you can actually do it pretty quick. It's maybe three, four, three, four five minutes to go back and completely change. Um, you know, so that's the deal. If you want that flexibility and you want that resolution and you want that power with this platform, that's how you go about changing the, uh, the two regulators. <clears throat> like I did all this. Uh, lower the external hammer spring adjuster, position one, dry fire only till the regs begin to dump, allow a moment for all the air to drain, we did, gently close clockwise the rearmost regulator, we did that, we opened it half a turn, not three quarters, replace the bottle, refill the bottle, <laughs> number 15, refill the bottle to max because much of it is just dumped into the power plenum, we saw that happen a bunch of times, and slowly open up the rear regulator counterclockwise to the desired pressure, observing at the rearmost pressure gauge. Dry fire five times, top seat the regulator, 
lead fire your newly acquired dual reg setting five times to fully seat the regulators. And guys, that's really all there is to it. it. Took a lot to explain it, but in reality, it's a pretty quick deal. Okay, so let's talk tunes. Let me get you through all of these. And, uh, and then we'll do a little show and tell and we'll call it a day and then I'll catch you in a few weeks over on the other channel when we get into the full review. All right. So the gun, we talked about this earlier a little bit. I'm going to put these up on the screen for you guys to see, but this is how the gun arrived to me. It arrived with those regs at 160 and 110. So a 50 bar difference between the two. I don't know. That was a little weird because they're recommending 30 to 40. Uh, power wheel number seven and then the internal hammer spring at number zero. And I slapped in that 25 grain FXs and, it, and I got a nice shot chart. Average of 1,008, extreme spread of 17, a standard deviation of 4.24. That's all good. 97 shots at 57 foot pounds. Um, this is with the 700 millimeter, 580 cc. That's the combo you see here. Uh, but it's too hot for a 25 grain, because we all know those 25 grains like to be 850 to 890, kind of as their magic window. And so then I had shared with you, well, maybe it was wanting a 34 grain, maybe it was set up for that. So I ran the 34 grain, left everything else the same, ran a chart with the 34 grain. Brought the average to a good place, 910. That's a great place to be with that 34 grain. I'd say 890 to 910 is a good sweet spot for that one. 40 ADS, 1175 standard deviation, 120 shots at 63 foot-pounds. Uh, poor ES and SD. Isn't it interesting how leaving everything the same, you get more shots with a heavier pellet? Um, that's because that heavier pellet when the regs and the valves all do their opening and closing, um, that regular that heavier pellet's putting more load on them, so there's less kind of freewheeling and waste in there. It forces them to kind of work harder and open and close quicker. So that's why you get more shots with, uh, with heavier lead. And that is always, with every brand, every shot chart I've ever done for five years. In fact, a lot of these companies, um, some companies haven't caught on yet and they shot chart their guns with light stuff to make it, lightweight lead to make it look like you have a high shot count. Slap in some heavier lead and a lot of times you get more. In, and uh, so there's that. So that was no bueno. <clears throat> that didn't work for me. So I set out in search of a tune for the 25 grain pellet, which is the staple pellet for this gun, this and the 34, okay? So, what did I do? I kind of bucked all of the trends that I saw out there because I remembered back to my learning with the Air Venturi Avenger that there's a lot to be gained from running low reg pressures sometimes if the regs can handle it. And if the valving is and the porting is calibrated to run those low reg pressures. And to my delight, they were, and it was, in the Maverick, okay? So 25 grain from 250 all the way down to 65 bar. This is my AAC Sniper, which is the 700. 25 grain Pro Tune, the 700 barrel and the 580 cc bottle. Regs at 95 and 70, we just created that. Power wheel number two, we just created that. Internal hammer spring at zero, we just created that. And boy, did it reward. Average 883, which is the perfect sweet spot for this pellet. Accuracy, accuracy should be awesome. On that note, guys, every tin of pellets is just a little bit different, and every barrel is just a little bit different. So if you don't get the accuracy you're looking for at 883, try 880 or 886 or 890. There's going to be a spot where you're gonna start seeing pellet on pellet. And your pellets aren't gonna do this. They're gonna just start doing this. Those are the veins of gold that you look for, okay? 11 foot per second ES, yummy. 2.8, 2.18 standard deviation. So those shots are really close to one another in velocity. 
145 shots at 44 foot pounds. It's the perfect 100 yard gun. Ideal for JSB in the FX 25 grain. So that's how easy it is to bounce to, bounce to a tune like this. Now let's say um, I'm working with that 25 grain, but maybe I want a little bit more power for inside of 50 yards and I'm okay sacrificing some accuracy because I don't need 3 8 inch groups at 50 yards. I'm okay with 1 inch groups at 50 yards or 3 quarter inch groups at 50 yards because the size of my game has gone up, you know, but so has the lethal, you know, kill box, if you will. All right. <clears throat> this is my AEAC 25 grain SR hunting, short range hunting, tune, parentheses, hot. Because it runs these a little bit hot. It runs that 25 grain to where you're going to start to see some instability with the pellet, especially with the wind. The wind's going to want to muck with it. Okay. Now our average has gone from 883, which is that mm, sweet spot, great stability, up to 919. All right, good ES, 12, standard deviation, 2.12, 130 shots at 48 foot-pounds. I mean, you could go for weeks <laughs> if you're hunting large game with that stuff versus 145 shots at 44 foot-pounds. Okay, so we picked up four foot-pounds with this tune at the expense of some long range accuracy. Okay. Ideal for the JSB Hades, which is a 26 and a half grain and the H and N sport Barracuda Hunter, which I think is also a 26 and a half, 27 grains, something, something like that. Those heavier pellets might offset this and bring this into a range where now you're starting to see that hundred yard stability out of the pellet. I'm letting you guys in on my thinking as I work my way through these tunes. I'm always tailoring the gun to work with a slug or a bunch of slugs or a few pellets that I know it's going to perform with at these velocities. Okay. So that's the 25 grain. Um, the 34 grain is, the, is another very popular slug. These are based off of the JSB redesign. Okay. Whereas this pellet is really designed to fly true at 850 to 880. This one is really designed to fly true at, let's say, 880 to 910. And the wind tends to muck with this a little bit less too. Not just because of the weight, but because of the design. So a lot of guys compete with this pellet. It also gives you more downrange energy and more power because it's heavier. All right. So I came up with three tunes for the 34 grain and the sniper here and one with the compact, which I'll show you. All right. I did a one, two, and three. So this is the 34 grain AAC sniper 34 grain pro tune one. The reason I came up with a one, two, and three is let's circle back to you never know exactly where your barrel and pellet are going to want to be for that stunning 100 yard accuracy. Are they gonna to wanna to be at an 894 average? Are they gonna to wanna to be at a 906 average? Are they gonna to wanna to be at a 909 average? So I came up with the three tunes just to show you how I got there or a good way to get there, all right? 700 millimeter barrel, 580cc bottle, regs at 125 and 100. There's that 25 bar differential, fill, Regulp times about two and a half seconds. Okay. Power wheel number seven. Internal hammer spring at zero. I still haven't even touched that micro adjustment on the internal hammer spring. So that came in a very good place. I've, I can envision somebody when, at the factory tour video in Sweden. They dial in every gun. I, someone dialed that in good. Real good over there. Average 894 ES28. Remember what we talked about, ESs, whether you're 10 or 25, it doesn't matter. 28 with this pellet, it's not going to matter at 100 yards. You're going to be right in there. Standard deviation, 5.12. 104 shots at 64 foot-pounds. So now we've gone up into from that 45, 48 up to 60 foot-pounds. It's a nice bump. Okay, Ideal for the JSB and FX 34 grain. That's tune one at an 894 average. 
So we look at tune two, and all I did for tune two, guys, is I added five bar of pressure to both of the regulators. And my 894 average went from, uh, went from an 894 average to a 906. Another great place to be. These often do well right up around 910, okay? If you can settle them back from that 910 a little bit, Sometimes it's a little easier to shoot well. All right, everything else is the same. Regs 130 and 105, power wheel seven, internal hammer spring zero. I've done nothing with this power wheel. We've left it alone. We're tuning just using the regs. That's what's so cool about this. 906 average, okay? Because my reg pressure's up, now everything's working a little bit harder. Yeah, the regs are, are putting more pressure on that hammer spring and so when that hammer spring opens and closes, or that valve opens and closes, it does so quicker, okay? So we notice our ES come down a little bit. Little spurts of air coming through, not such, you know, kind of big gulps. 21 ES, 4.99 standard deviation, okay? Not unhealthy for better accuracy. 102 shots at 62 foot-pounds, ideal for the 34 grain JSB or FX. So 102 shots verse at 102 at 62 versus 104 at 60 okay so two less shots two more foot pounds that's tuning all right took it a step further i figured one of you might want to be a stickler for that 910 um whether you know this or not a lot of the events rocky mountain air gun challenge pyramid air cup um extreme bench rest those shooting the JSB 34 grain are aiming for 910 feet per second. That's typically a real good sweet spot in the wind with that pellet. So I put a tune together, 909 average, okay? Done nothing with the power wheel or external hammer spring. All I did was take those regs and where were we? 130, 105, went up another five. 135 on the front reg, 110 on the back. Now the, the, that rear reg is putting even more pressure on that, in, that, that valve and that spring. So they're forced to you know, work even a little bit harder and a little bit faster, okay? So you get a little bit, little bit more velocity, all right? 909 average, 19 ES, 4.83 standard deviation, 103 shots at 62 foot-pounds. I think that that was the same. 102 shots at 62. So we picked up a foot pound. <laughs> All right. Um, ideal for the, for the JSB 34. So these are three really good tunes for this pellet. That's where you want to aim with this barrel or whatever. The Lothar Walther match grade, the Lothar Walther polygonal. Um, you know, I even had good success with that with the Air, Air Venturi Avenger barrel. I mean, that's, that just seems to be where this pellet wants to fly. I don't know if, if that's because everybody's copying the twist traits, but that's that's been an ideal place. All right. So another projectile that you want to be able, that you want to know where you're at with is the FX Hybrid Slug, okay? These are manufactured by Rat Sniper exclusively for FX air guns. They put a ton of R&D and work into this slug. It's just a different kind of slug. Um, it works very well with the um, 1 in 24 twist that comes with the gun. It works well. It can work well if you speed it up with the Supreme 1 in 18 twist that you can buy as an accessory barrel or what have you, all right? They're telling me in all of their R&D at Sweden and a Rat Sniper that you want to be between 900 and 910 feet per second with this slug, all right? That's the sweet spot, okay? Ken Hicks at Southern Precision Air Weapons, when he's tuning a gun, he lets the gun tell him where it wants the velocity of the projectile, which is a great way to tune. If I wasn't in my 25 yard backyard, I'd be doing the same. So I'm getting you nine tenths of the way there or more with these tunes. You might have to do just a little bit. You might not. 
okay? So I came up with two FX hybrid slug tunes, okay? And here they are, tune one and a tune two. One with a 903 average and the other with a 908 average with this setup you see here. That is right in that 900 to 910 window where everybody's telling me you want to be for the best 100 yard and beyond accuracy. Okay. FX Hybrid 26 grain from 250 down to 85 bar. AEC Sniper FX Hybrid Tune 1. Okay, this same setup, 700 and 580, barrel and bottle. Regs are at 115 and 90 for the front and the rear. Power wheel is at number four. One, two, three. Okay, so how easily I did that. You adjust your regs, then you put your power wheel at number four. Okay, I'm going to set them down in a very precarious place here on top of my other tunes. All right. And my internal hammer spring was opened up one quarter turn counterclockwise. Remember, counterclockwise increases preload and strength and force and speed. So I got to bring this down to adjust. I'm not going to do it. I stick in my little Allen and I open that up one quarter of a turn. And then I bring it, oops, and I bring it back to number, that's five. That's four. <laughs> what I found interesting about this is I had watched, or I don't know if this video is out yet. I don't even know if they're going to release it. But if FX shared with me, um, they have their tuning school that Ernest puts on. And he had said something in there about this slug kit not liking Power Wheel 4 it not having good efficiency. And that you want to use 7 on the Power Wheel. I, I didn't find that with the way this gun comes with the hammer kit that comes with it and the valve kit that comes with it. So I don't want you guys to get focused on that and the message is don't be afraid to experiment, right? So regs 115 and 90, power wheel four, internal hammer spring, quarter turn counterclockwise. Got a 903 average, yummy. 21 ES, 4.74 standard deviation, okay? 148 shots at 47 foot pounds. <laughs> with the 26 grain FX hybrid slug, okay? Good place to be. 900 to 910 is ideal for the FX hybrid according to the people that developed that load and these barrels, okay? So try to filter out a lot of what you see on, um, on the forums. That being said, Ken at SPA has had very good success pushing these as high as 950 if the barrel wanted it good accuracy at 100 yards. Just got to experiment. All right. All these little shark's teeth you see here versus some of these flatter charts. That is normal for a slug, guys, because the slugs don't seal in the barrel as well as pellets. Case in point. Where's my, this is pretty cool. Case in point. I I ran this tune as you see the gun configured, and then I set it up with a little compact over there. I put the compact bottle on, I put the compact barrel on, didn't touch the regs, didn't touch the hammer spring, internal or external, micro, macro, and I ran uh, the 25 grain, because I had a hunch that your, your tuning sixth sense will develop as you do this enough. I had a hunch that it would really like that with a shorter barrel, and look at the the 21 ES and the 4.74 SD dropped to a 9 ES and a 1.66 SD just from switching to slugs to pellets. Why do I share that with you? I share that with you because I don't want you go, going nuts like I was trying to chase a tighter ES and SD with slugs because the the physics just don't allow it to get there because this doesn't seal as well as a slug does in the barrel with its head and skirt sealing. It just has, you know, whatever, whatever seal it's got up on the flanks there. So that's just the nature of the beast. Be aware of it and be very okay. This is probably a really good tune for a slug, all right? So there's the 903 average. I wanted to also come up with one to get you guys a little closer to the 910, and so I did. 
So I left the regs at 115 and 90, as they were here. I left my power wheel on a, a number four, okay? But I opened up that internal hammer spring from one quarter to three eighths. So basically I was one, I was one quarter open and I opened it up another eighth and that's all it took. That's what I meant circling back before when I was like, you got to go an eighth at a time sometimes on that internal hammer spring to find those little veins of gold for yourself. It's really easy to overshoot it. Had I gone another quarter, it would have messed it up and it would have overshot it. Okay. Now my average went up to a 908 from a 903. 19 ES, tighten that up a little bit because we got more force on things. Standard deviation, 4.39. 137 shots at 48 foot pounds. So I've what sacrificed, you know, five shots? No, 140. Yeah, I've sacrificed about 10, 10, 11 shots. And I've picked up a foot pound and a little bit more velocity. Slugs aren't as efficient in the barrel because they don't seal as well. So you probably get a lot of air moving past them. And 900 to 910 is ideal for uh, for the FX hybrid. Okay. So there's a good nugget to get you in a good place on the hybrid with that 700 millimeter barrel. Okay. Oh, we're putting a good dent in it, guys, which is good because I got to use the boys' room. Uh, ha, let's do this one before we switch barrels. This is cool. So a lot of you have been asking me how much power can I get out of the Maverick 25, and I've shared that with you a couple of times already. Um, if you want 80 foot-pounds and you want to dedicate this to a slug gun, Spend that 50 bucks and buy, buy yourself a little slug kit from Ken. Okay? Um, but I don't want you to feel like you have to. Because I got what I felt was more than satisfactory performance and power. Um, just running things as they are. So, for you guys, I went out in search of a max power tune that also had what I considered to be a good usable shot chart. Okay, and to get there, circling back, I didn't need to run a really high reg pressure to make that, make that happen. All right, so here it is. FX 34 grain. Okay, so I'm picking my big heavy pallet. All right, so I've got something to swing. From 250 down to 115 bar, AAC Sniper Max Power Tune. You may be able to get another a foot pound or two or three out of it, but this is my max power tune because this is where I was comfortable. This is where it, the gun sounded like it was in a good place and I felt like I had a good usable shot, shot string. 961 average, okay? Be mindful. That's hot for this. So you're probably not gonna get the 50 and 100 yard accuracy that you want. You may, but you're probably not gonna see it. So. But if you're coon or possum hunting inside of 50 yards, it doesn't matter, right? We all know that. It only matters if you're after English sparrows or something. 961 average, 19 ES, 4.03 standard deviation, 72 shots at 70 foot pounds. It's a lot for a 25 cal, guys. Ideal, this is an ideal tune because it's pushing a 34 grain pellet to 961, it makes this tune very ideal for the NSA slugs. The 33 and a half, the 36.2, and the 38.5. I had success with this tune with both the heavy 1 and 18 twist and the accessory heavy 1 and 18 twist and the included 1 and 24 twist um, one and 24 twist barrel. So both liners shot these three NSA slugs well with this tune because it brought them clearly into a velocity where they wanted to be to stabilize that slug. Something you can play with. Me, I just wanted to kind of get you in a good, good place with that. So this is a very good place to start. All right. Now, um, I kind of modified this a little bit. Yeah, there it was. I kind of mod, oh, yeah. Whoa, jumping ahead of myself. To get here, 155 on that front reg, so 130 on that rearmost reg that the valve sees. Seven on my power wheel, okay? So I'm cranking up the power wheel, 
that internal hammer spring three and a half turns counterclockwise from that zero. So I'm really loading up that spring to work with that higher 130 reg pressure. Remember, you always work your reg pressures and your hammer spring up and down together. If you get, if you get, <laughs> I'll show you this. I shot these so you guys don't have an example. If you get big old alligator teeth like that in your shot string, or you get good, and then you get big old alligator teeth like this in your shot string, that's because your regulator pressure and your hammer spring tension are out of harmony with one another. You make them low together, you make them high together, you make them in the middle together. That way your opposing forces are balanced and you get nice, good, clean shot charts. Okay, so three and a half turns, I'm opening up that internal counterclockwise hammer spring micro adjustment. And, um, and, it, and it rewarded, okay? So then I modified this a little bit. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of zero in on a slug or a range of slugs. And to do that, all I did was drop the regulator pressure by five bars. And here, oh, here it is. So I call this an AEC Sniper Slug Tune, 35 to 45 grain, okay? Because I saw this do well with those H or those <laughs> NSA slugs, um, you know, in that in that weight range at 25 yards, I saw the stability. By the way, you can. <clears throat> so there's a comment on Instagram that a lot of the, what I do at 25 yards is wasteful, but it, it it hasn't been for me over the five years. A lot of what I learn at 25, watching the pellet or the slug go down to the target. I can apply at 50 and 100 yards. In other words, I can grab a big bunch of pellet at slugs, start with them at 25 here at the house, and as they're going to the target, they're either going like this or they're going like, like that. And, and sometimes they go like that into one hole. That's not going to be a great projectile for 50 and 100 because that's going to turn into this, right? So I look for those pellets and slugs that do this at 25, those are what I bring with me out to 50 and 100 that eventually make it into the full review. The groups I see at 25 are part of that equation. The other part of that equation is how is the group made? Was it made like this or was it made like this? If it was made like this, I don't even bring them because that this is gonna get disastrous when you get out to 50 <laughs> and 100. So, so that's why I do that. And it saves me a huge amount of time when I start rolling cameras 25 miles away from here out in the country and I don't have to bring everything with me. So that's just answering that. Okay, so dropped the reg pressure from 155, 130 down to 150, 125, left the power wheel the same, eased off on that hammer spring, that internal hammer spring a little bit. So seven on the power wheel, instead of three and a half turns, I'm two and a quarter turns and I settled into a really nice place that you can kind of use for all of those slugs, that 33, the 35, the 37, you know, in that window. It puts you at about a 950 or a 947 average, you know, with projectiles like that. 17 ES, 4.49 standard deviation, 85 shots at 68 foot pounds, so crushing it with tons of efficiency still. Ideal for 34 to 45 grain slugs. It pushes the 34 grain which is, it pushes the 34 grain FX JSB to 925, which is the upper enchelant of where you want to be with that pellet. So you can also cross apply this to the 34 grain FX JSB pellet. If you need a ton of power, that can be another good max power tune. If your wind conditions and your barrel and gun in tune will tolerate 925 feet per second, because that's really getting to where you'll start to see that pellet destabilize at 50 and 100 yards. Okay, so that's been a lot. My next three tunes are going to be compact tunes, all right? So we said earlier, you can get this in a VP, you can get it in a sniper, you can get it in the compact. So switching is as easy as this. All 
right, so there's that. We're gonna replace it with this bottle, all right? But I gotta remove this guy. So what I need is an Allen. Move this into where you can see here. This is a, it's worn off. I can't see what the hell it is. I think it's about a four millimeter. I could be wrong. Double check me, it doesn't matter. Gotta take off the cheek piece, okay? Just lift straight off, set it there. Grab a bigger Allen. This one is, uh, I don't know, it's worn off. I think it's a five, five millimeter, okay? There's a screw in the back here, crack that. Two revolutions maybe. Then you take, you don't take it out. And then take this guy, crack that. Two, three revolutions. <laughs> out it comes guys, it's that easy. Right? There's a notch, your transfer port's on the bottom. Okay, by the way, this little bar you see across the transfer port that makes it look like an intake on a, in a cylinder head for a car, is they've made that port so big to make big power for you, they need a little bridge there so your pellet and slug doesn't fall down into that and get stuck when it's getting cycled over. That goes towards the bottom. This little notch you see cut in the brass goes towards the top. Okay, there it is. Now, I do like, I'm not gonna do it now, but every once in a while I'll take a little of the O-ring lube and I'll dab it on these O-rings. I don't want so much that it's getting sucked into the transfer port and blown into the barrel. See, see that? Look, see it hits there and then as I rotate it, that's that little groove, that little notch I, I showed you. It's kind of cut, cut into place. So you want to line that up. You don't have to go tight with this. Just, just kind of, just a little bit till it bites. Okay, there's that. Um, line up your holes. Put on my cheek piece back on. You don't have to go tight with the cheek piece. It's just aluminum it's biting into and it's poly here. I don't want to go too nuts with that. And then where's my baby bottle? Let me just screw on our baby bottle. Okay, there is the bottle. All right. Okay, so this is my favorite deal, guys. This is me right here. This thing is freaking awesome. And you might be going, well, that's a really little bottle. I ain't going to get me no shots. But for don't forget, your 300cc bottle is attached to your 89cc power plenum. So that's a really 389cc deal, which is not that far off of a 480cc bottle that's attached to like a normal air gun with like a normal, you know, a normal little reservoir kind of behind it with the with the regulator in it. So there's your compact. Um, shorter barrel, it's gonna take more air to accomplish the same thing. But um, it's maneuverable, it's light. Um, the dwell time is less, so for me, it's easier to be accurate at greater distances. It's just a sweet, sweet deal. So. I kind of got excited when, when I got sent all this stuff and I'm like, Black, I gotta make them some tunes for this one. I can't forget this one. This is super cool. So I did. And, and here they are. So what do we want to do first? Um, I like this 25 Pro Tune. Yeah. So this is really, really cool. So we talked about the FX Hybrid, those tunes one and two that I did with the 700 millimeter barrel and the big old 580 cc bottle. That exact same tune, changing nothing and just putting on this barrel and this bottle made for the perfect <laughs> 25 grain compact AAC Pro Tune. Change nothing. Um, 500 millimeter barrel, 300 cc bottle, regs 115 and 90, power wheel four, internal hammer spring three eighths. It is the FX Hybrid Power Tune number two that I shared with you. 880 average, 
landed me in a sweet, perfect spot with that little 25 grain, okay? The bread and butter round for these guns. 9 ES, whoa, 1.66 standard deviation, whoa. <laughs> I told you we're not supposed to be getting excited about these numbers, but that's neat to get excited about. It just tells you that things are really happy in the gun. Doesn't matter as much as a, at 100, as long as you're under 25. 64 shots at 44 foot pounds. Out of that, out of that, in this, thumping. I mean, this is all you need for a day of hunting. I mean, really. Same settings as the FX Hybrid Tune, AAC Tune 2. Loving that. Okay. Well, so then I went, well, I wonder if it'll work with the 34 grain. <laughs> this little guy. And it worked with the 34 grain, guys. Let me tell you what. So, 34 grain, right? A little more thump. A little more wind resistance. That redesigned shape that's going to do really well in the wind at far distances that wants to live 880 to kind of 910. Don't feel that because you see the guys compete internationally and get on the podium pushing that 34 grain pellet to 910 that you need to be. Sometimes when you get to befriend those guys, they're running 880. 875, 890, because they found that that's how it goes through the winds best on that day. So don't be afraid of that. Case in point, average 886, ES10, standard deviation 281, 44 shots at 58 foot-pounds out of this little tiger. All right, 886 is very ideal for the JSB and FX34 grain. Guys. Guys, that's the cat's meow right there. I'll tell you what, okay? And then I said, well, it does good with the 25 and the, and the 34 grain like this. And everybody's all peeing in their pants over the JSB Hades. Where are you, Hades? <laughs> I got to come up with a Hades tune for you guys with this little guy. So I did. Um, I accuracy tested all these tunes, by the way, guys. Harmonics was great. Accuracy at 25 is great. Stability was good. It's going to be good as I stretch things out. Okay. Hades, 26.54 grain for, from 250 down to 95 bar. AAC Hades Compact Pro Tune. 500 millimeter barrel and 300 bottle. Regs at 125 and 100. Okay. Let me hang up on there for a second. 100 bar reg. 100 bar reg. I'll probably take these off now. 100 bar reg for this little barrel and I'm still in a really good place. And I've been reading a lot of people like to get these little guns and twist these reg pressures way up high. You don't need to and you're just messing up your shot count and harmonics. You'll do better. You'll probably do better not. I'm not saying that's all. This is the only way to do it, but I found that this is a better way to do it where I'm happier and hopefully you guys will be happier too. Okay. 885 average, okay? That is a beautiful place to be with the Hades. These don't like to be pushed super fast. They start to do funky things with, with their, uh, their little slit in the front in the wind, I found. Also, the Hades loses steam very quickly between the time it leaves here and lands 50 yards away. It's got some kind of funky drag thing associated with it. So you want to push them as hard as you can without compromising the accuracy. And that's what I felt like I did. 885 average, 90S, 2.13 standard deviation. 58 shots with the Hades at 46 foot-pounds. Nice low regs, 125-100. Power wheel, a nice easy number four. Internal hammer spring, zero. Um, you know... FX was giving me a little... FX USA was giving me a little coaching in the beginning... And they were under the feeling that I wouldn't have good results at, at some of these lower power wheel settings. And, and I've had really good results at some of these lower power wheel settings. So I just want to point it out. If you watch any of their videos, that may be a good way to do it. But I found another good way to do it that it's mine. I like it more because I can hear the harmonics and I know the gun's happy. But maybe theirs is okay too. So... What's interesting about this tune, 58 shots at 46 foot-pounds, it also puts it in a beautiful place with the H&N Barracuda Hunter, which coincidentally it also loved at this velocity 
and in this setup. So if you don't have access to the Hades right now, but you do have access to the Barracuda Hunter, because all the craziness is going on, get yourself some of these. these. This was scary good out of this. And these things are as hard as marbles. You know, so you get cracked in the noggin with one of those. It'll be lights, it'll be lights out. So, you know, we put a Hades tune on it, uh, on it as well. All right. Um, that's the tuning, guys. Um, you know, I could reread the guidelines over there, but I think you guys mostly get it. If you're going to decrease reg pressure, you got to degas the gun. Reg 1 always needs to be higher than Reg 2. It's just a step down so that Reg 2 can do a better, do its job better for you. Don't go excessively high on your reg pressures. You don't need to. Your gun will be happier. Your hardware will be happier. I think you'll find uh, better accuracy. And um, don't feel like you need a 40 or 50 bar differential. You know, I'm okay with two and a half seconds after, you know, to refill for that second shot. So that tw I, I feel like that 25 bar differential between the two regs, I feel like that's where a lot of this success has come from. I haven't seen a whole lot of people that have put out a dozen tunes to validate their work at a 30 bar or a 40 bar differential or a 45 bar differential. Maybe it's out there, maybe it's not. Maybe that's just another good way. I don't know. I just know that this is a really good way, so I'm sticking with it. You'll want to do your do your own homework. And the other big takeaway is the gauges. We're on a good path with FX with Wicca. Very good to see. Um, and then this segment is a gives you great resolution in the back here. Um, when you're looking at what the reg's doing, and it gives you a ton of features up here with the bottle. Just remember your point of purchase is probably going to be your support network. And um, it's a newer product, so you know. As good as it is, as happy as people have been with it, you know, you may run into a couple of caveats with it. I'm going to go so far as to say, yeah, I like it. I recommend it. I found it useful. So, you know, I'd have no problem saying go out and buy one. I just don't know how it's going to look two years from now. Okay, but I think because of that firmware upgrade kit, um, any good changes they make, you can, you can, you can make those changes you know, to, uh, to your deal, to your gauge with the, whatever the newest deal is. Um, and then the Maverick, lots of flexibility, lots of power, all the latest and greatest from FX, all the tech is there. And at a, it's a lot of money, but it's also when you look at the whole playing field of what's out there, it's a super competitive price for what you get. And I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, I don't like this. I love this gun. I've had a blast that's one of the reason you guys wound up with 12. i just couldn't i couldn't stop myself i kind of got into it and i had so much fun tuning it i just couldn't stop myself and then and then it was like oh what's under that stone and what's going to be under that stone and i started playing with the barrels and the bottles and and just found myself in a really good place and and the thing's been a freaking tank i've i've whipped this thing like a mule for like three weeks um, which those of you, by the way, that have been following me on Instagram, hooked on air, thank you. Um, you'll you've been privy to my findings. I put my daily tech notes and pictures up there with what I'm doing. That comes out in front of the videos. But just just a beat. I haven't been able to break it. I've been trying to break it. I can't. <laughs> I like trying to break FXs. I've exceeded. I, I I've succeeded. I think once. What, maybe once. Yeah, I think just once. <laughs> I whip them like a mule, guys. And then um, quick little show and tell before we go. Um, <clears throat> Amazon Giant 9 Outdoors and Pinty have taken notice of AEAC and what it is that I do here. Okay, these guys sell all sorts of optics that are really big in the AR, AK world. They've proven themselves, the big YouTubers there. They're inexpensive. Their targets are inexpensive. But they're, they're, they've been, it's a good product. You go over to Amazon and there's like hundreds and thousands of four and a half star, five star ratings. So when they reached out to me and wanted to be a part of what I was doing because they want to be a part of what you air gunners are doing, I was like, you know, I was already familiar with them 
through watching, you know, the powder burning big YouTubers. And I was like, yeah, yeah I think my audience would appreciate that. So they've sent me a huge ass crate of these targets. I'm going to be testing them um, out in the full review that you'll catch over on AEAC Home in a couple of weeks. But there's all different sorts of types and they're extremely well priced, like 15 to 25 bucks for one of these things. And they're designed for air guns and 22 rimfire. We're going to put it to the test with, with, uh, with mini Mav and, and big Mav here for sure. But um, they've also given me a coupon code for you guys. So when you go over to Amazon um, and you put it in your cart, you can use the coupon code of um, TNF2042V as in Victor. I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it. It doesn't apply to all their stuff, but they've given me probably eight or ten different targets that it will apply to. So, um, so yeah, it's a 20% off coupon of like something that's already very value priced. So I'm going to give them a try. I hope you guys do too. Uh, the more of you that jump in and, and, and pick one up using that coupon code, they look at that and they say, yeah, we want to support AEAC into the future. And that just means saving for you guys. So we're in this together. Whew. I don't think I've left anything out. I've left a lot out, but not that I won't cover in the uh, full review. Um, one thing, if you do buy the VP, something that I didn't realize, it comes with the 500 barrel. It comes with this aluminum. I think this is a 400 cc bottle, but it's like a 230 bar fill, I think. Double check me, not 250. So it's a little smaller. It's a little bit less of a high fill. So you are going to get less shots out of it. But if you're bench resting the gun for competition, this is heavier. This is heavier than this, so that's going to play to your advantage as a bench gun. So that VP, you're getting in the door at $1,450. Even with this and that 600 barrel, it's got to be, it's, it's, I think a lot of people are going to like it. Um, oh, you know what I didn't show you how to do? Damn it! I didn't show you how to replace the liners. Okay, super easy. Let me do it super quick so that you guys can see. So I promised you I would. Just unscrew the shroud. It's actually unscrewing up here at the front, okay? Okay, there goes the shroud. Same rules apply for both. Okay, up here in the front, you're gonna see this little plug. You gotta unscrew it. I knew I was forgetting something. I'm not putting this in the full review, so you guys are going to get it here. <laughs> you start it with a 10 millimeter wrench. You unscrew it, and then you're going to see the tip of your barrel right here. I like to take a piece of cardboard and a pair of pliers and put it over there. When you first get these guns, there's going to be O-rings inside this sleeve that kind of hold the barrel in place. On every FX ever, I've just tossed them aside. Okay, you Just start it like that. If you have the O-rings in there, you're going to need to use this to get it all the way out. Um, you can shake, you can pull this out. Here, look how easy this is. So there it is. Take one out. It's got a little um, cut on this end so you know which is, end is which. Look how nice that makes it for cleaning. Deep cleaning. There's no O-rings in here, so you can get aggressive with Croil and some other, you know, um, ammonia-based cleaners or whatever. And you just kind of fish it back in there, put it in, and then uh, you put things uh, you put things back together. Um, the O-rings that come inside these barrels, on all the FXs, I've always just kind of tossed them aside. They're really there to make the gun sound better, to sound of higher quality. Uh, there's, I've never seen an accuracy, accuracy distance with them. And when I asked FX about them, they're like, yeah, it's really just to give it a, more of a better sound. Um, not too tight on this. I mean, not even until it stops, just till you kind of feel it snug, snug. They put some pressure on that. That's it, guys. That's, that's as easy. These are 110 bucks if you want to change lengths and change... Um, 
change twist rates, remembering that the entire kit, not this, this is an aftermarket piece, the shroud, the sleeve, the liner, all this jazz up here, you're 3 350 in that range. But a lot of flexibility. Okay, that's it. I'm done. I got to pee. I'm starving and I'm thirsty. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging with me for so long. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, Facebook, AEAC, Aragon Exploration Advancement Channel, Hooked on Air, same for Instagram. Catch you guys in two, maybe three weeks, depending on the weather. We are in hurricane season here in Florida. It's raining a ton. We'll run the other channel for a full review of the Maverick. Thanks, guys. Take care.